Okay, now we're recording it. Three, two, one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ah, that didn't go right. One played before the other. Hold on. Three, two, one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Skim. My name is Scott. And I'm Kim. And we're here to bring you another episode of the Scott and Kim Show for Sunday, April 7th, 2019. Holy moly, I can't believe how time is flying. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it is flying. I don't <laughs> like it. It's not a. It's not fun. I don't like time flying. I like it to slow down just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Yeah, when we started this, Van wasn't even here yet. Now Van is almost 10 weeks old. Yeah, Van and Nan. Hey, did you notice the other day you were wearing the exact same shirt as the kid? Yes, I saw that picture. Was that on purpose? I didn't. No, I didn't plan that. They just <laughs> you saw that pic- picture. You were here. You were like physically there. They stopped by on Taylor's birthday. Yeah, twenty-five. And I matched the baby. Yeah. Um, anyway, thanks for being with us, everybody. I've had a rough week. I've been sick all week. <laughs> and Kim can tell you because I am oh, a miserable. It's been a little bit rough. I'm a miserable poop when I'm sick. He's he's not the easiest person, but. Are there any guys who really are? I don't let's know. Let's be honest let's, here. Let's talk about that stereotype. Are all It is a stereotype, yes. All, but all guys and men are terrible sick people? I think what? that... I'm not saying all women, but when you're a mom, mm-hmm. a wife and a mom, usually you're the one that when you get sick, you just keep trucking along. You, you still have to cook, do laundry, clean the house. Otherwise, it all falls apart. I can see that. And I'm not saying that there aren't men who do those things for their wives or with their wives or there's like a shared mm-hmm. you know chore chart i don't know chore chart jeez <laughs> haven't done that one of those since our kids were little yeah but as a mom in our house mm-hmm. and i was talking to taylor about this too she's like yes you just keep going even when you get sick yeah no that you do carter does the same thing she kind of just keeps going yep taylor just keeps going uh, Nick and I just turn into <laughs> slobby. You just go to bed. Yeah, we just, just stay there. <laughs> we just go to bed. And I feel like I've always been this way, too. It's not like a thing in this stage of my life. It's when I was a kid. If I got sick, I was just dead to the world. And um, and I hate being down. Yeah. I hate not being able to do, get anything done. So I just keep going. You've somehow survived this, though. You haven't caught it, which is great. Knock on wood. This is con, this is That's con good. secondhand cron uh, cron con crud. Yes, poor Carter got really sick. Still kept working, worked from home most of the week. She, she got it from sick, GDC. So. She mm-hmm. flies home. She doesn't feel great that day, but she's not sure why. <laughs> and then it <laughs> By hits the her. next day. We knew why. She yeah. just had a fever and the whole thing. And Scott's had that this week. A couple of days of fever. Yeah. Sore throat. Then he was awful kind of cough. Crashed in bed. Can't yeah. sleep. And then when I do sleep, it's like in the middle of the day. Yeah. Because I'm catching up for the <laughs> nights I can't sleep. actually did get some sleep. So anyway, this it's isn't just a big boo-hoo, poor Scott moment. <laughs> but I wanted to just put that out there. It's not um, been that big a deal. It's been it's been trouble, mostly for me. Kim's been fine. You just keep going. and You're like the weird battery rabbit. <laughs> the Energizer Bunny. Is that, how is that, that, that make, what you're refer, referring to? Does that make you feel good when I call you the, the battery rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> anyway, I have to be going today because I'm ta- I'm doing Chris Metzen interviews today. I yes. have to. I'm have glad to, you're feeling better. Yeah, a little bit. It's not great. I still feel like I could take a heavy blanket and go to sleep right now. Yes, oh. your weighted blanket has saved you this week. Doesn't that sound good right this second? <laughs> a weighted blanket, uh, man. That's so good. You, My best Christmas it's present. It's your very best Christmas present, apparently, because he uses it every day. Yeah, every freaking day. So we did something today. This is so funny because I'm kind of out of it. Carter's now sort of recovered. And we have been planning for a couple of months now to do this weird thing in our stairwell, sort of stairway basement entry stairwell. The stairwell to the basement. Yeah. Which is just like a tall, three tall walls. Three tall walls. You go down. There's a banister in the middle and on the sides. It's just a... They're I think just you walls. posted something about this, what we were going to do. I did. I put up a fake like you shouldn't have done mock that, thing. Because no one knows what it really looks like. Yeah. They will eh. when I do real pictures. They'll <laughs> love it when I'm done. But anyway, so we go we were gonna do this forever ago and we and we talked about it and talked about it and 
<clears throat> we finally said, yeah, let's do it. We're just going to graffiti up this wall. We're going to draw all over it with We've been with talking Sharpies. about it for quite some time. And this morning you went, uh, I don't know. I'm not ready. I don't know if, what to put on there. And I just said, I I can't stand it anymore. We got to get yeah. started. Kim grabbed, grabbed a Sharpie, went down <laughs> in the went, well, and drew a... Just got started. <laughs> drew a big, uh, uh, what was it? Octopus. octopus. She likes to draw octopuses. So she drew a big octopus Yep. right in the center there. So now Carter and I have added you know, three or four things. And I did a hot air balloon, yep. which was kind of fun. Carter did a monkey. I did a so fish. So we've gotten started on our graffiti wall, our graffiti stairwell. Yeah. So when I'm, when we're, as we make progress, oh, we should be filming it as we go so we can show like time lapse. Why or don't we do that? a picture. Why don't we do that? We I, should do I that. I don't know. Don't, don't ask me this. I don't do this stuff. <laughs> we live in 2019. You'd think I'd think of this. Well, anyway, that's the plan. And it's exciting because um, it's going to look rad. It's going to look really cool. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I already did the clouds. Yeah. Um, I think Hannah just went painted, just kind of went crazy and did the cloud edges to it so we could start it and get going. Yeah. We're not. Just get this thing done. We're not normal. We're we're like, we like to do, (laughs) we like to do things. We're not normal. We do weird (laughs) things in our house that. I don't. I don't know. Well, we, we always lot, have. I know, but there are a lot of people who'd be like, "What? You're drawing on your wall? Like yes. literally, you're drawing With on your sharpies wall. Yeah. on paint? Yeah, on the three walls, different yes. artists, like straight up. It's like not <laughs> even going to look the same. Cart Taylor's encouraged to come put something in there. Hopefully, she'll come do some graffiti lettering for us. Nick will draw on there tonight, probably. Yeah, he'll do one of his stoner-looking heads. Uh, I love his stuff, though. It doesn't look stoner. It looks like him. Yeah. Well. <laughs> He looks a little stonery. These oh days. my gosh! I'm not saying he's he not. is a stoner. I'm just no. saying he's got that long-haired "Hey, dad" kind of thing. I got going his on. hair all up in one man bun last night. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it looked good. It was like a he has enough hair now to make he, a giant man bun in the does, rear. He does. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Do you want? What do you want him ultimately to do with that hair? Cut it? Leave it? He's talking about cutting it, but leaving the top. So we'll see. All right. I don't know. Well, that light is really bright on your eyes. Um. Yeah. You look good, but I don't want you to feel like you're going blind over there. Do you feel like you're There's going... a reason why I'm not looking into the camera, because it's really close to that <laughs> light that I can't... Now I see the dots. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, the point is, like, who cares about a wall if it's just blank? That's boring. So we're going to cover it full. It's just going to be edge to edge, yep. black, ink. And what do I usually say? What? There's nothing more boring than boring. Right. So let's just make this thing cool. And if we hate it... You can always paint, you over, paint it. over it. Yeah, you paint over it. You put some it. kills, and then you put your paint, and you're set. Yeah, but I for now I love it. It's gonna look really cool. We should put a marker in Van's hand and make him go. We'll have him draw in there whenever he gets a little older. Okay, we'll leave a little space he's, for him. He's pretty tiny. Yeah, he's a little small. <laughs> Wait until he can the, draw uh, something really cool, and then it'll, that's what he gets to add to it. Is he even holding the bottle yet? No. No, he's still just. He's nine weeks old. He's yeah. just free balling it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, nine weeks. We hit nine weeks. We hit nine weeks. He's sure smiling a lot, though. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you can check out any of Taylor's posts. She's posting his stuff all the time, and it's really cute. Yeah, on Instagram. It's fun to watch. She, what's, what's a count? She has like four accounts. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Taylorphoto.com no, extravaganza. Her, that's her photography page. No, not oh, there. Uh, t- uh, mama. The, well, the mama one. The, the llama mama. But she has mama, it's llama? a private account. You have to request access to it. That's boring. You usually post plenty, so. Yeah, I post a lot of it. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to, but I just do. So. I don't think she minds. Well, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll take some pictures and let everybody know how that goes because it should be pretty good. Um, all right, we're going to dive right into stuff today. Okay. Like an email from Tim from Colorado, which says, Hi, Scott and Kim. Love your show. Keep up the good work. My wife and I found out about a month ago we'll be adding a new addition to our family. And while I've been excited, fear has slowly been creeping into my brain. Oh, <laughs> A little set up, I am an only child, which meant I never had to deal with crying uh, for my parents' attention or vying for it, at least with other siblings. My wife comes from a family with two older brothers. However, she was the youngest, about five years difference between her and her next oldest sibling. That's almost like being a only an kid. only child. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to get to the point of my email, I'm worried I will lose that special time that I have with my oldest daughter when the new baby comes. I remember feeling this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, One thing that we especially love is her bedtime ritual, at which point she gets almost all of my attention. We read, we sing songs, we play games, we snuggle before going to bed. I worry that this time will get lost when the new kiddo comes around, and I worry the baby, as the baby gets older, it will become more of a whole family thing, and I won't get to spend one-on-one daddy-daughter time with the oldest. How do I handle all this, or how did how did you handle this with your kids? 
Uh, did you set up a specific time to spend one on one with each of them? I'm worried about, uh, or am I worrying too much about this? Maybe my daughter won't care as much as I'm uh, coming at it from a more selfish angle. My advice, or any advice appreciated, Tim. All right, Tim, I do remember doing exactly this and thinking, how in the world am I going to love another kid as much as I love my oldest? Mm -hmm. And thinking, there's just no way. And then they came along and it was fabulous. And now we hate that one. (laughs) Rude. (laughs) And didn't have any problem at all having them blend into the, the routine and the nighttime and all of that stuff. But I will say that when they first get here, you, you think it's all going to change, but it doesn't. They're a teeny tiny baby and you don't have to have bedtime stories and cuddles mm-hmm. and all of that stuff with them yet. So you're going to continue to do that. But as your oldest gets older, that also changes. And I also remember Scott and I taking turns doing dates with the kids. So even if it was just to go to the gas station and pick a treat, we would have our single alone time with that one and we'd each switch off yep. um, kids to do that. Yep. And it was sometimes ice cream and McDonald's or Happy Meals or just a soda or whatever. Um, there was always time to do that with both of them. And it's amazing, like, by the time three came along, it didn't feel any different. It didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Yeah, and when you're home, you the new kid or the older kid gets to be a part of a this part new of it, yeah. life. So they get to hang around and, and go, Ooh, tickle, tickle. And you know, <laughs> it gets to be the sis, the sibling that they want to be. And, and so you involve them in that. Don't separate them. Yeah. I used to have Taylor. It was fun. They were three years apart, all of the kids. And it was really fun by then that Taylor was really into helping with that. Like, Hey, go take this diaper to the garbage or go get me a diaper, or, you know, be a part of everything. So when it came time to bedtime, it was like, oh, why don't you go pick out a book for me to read to your sibling? Yeah. And that made it really fun for them. Yeah, like, for to sure. To be a part of all of it. And but, and having it all together is really a lot of fun. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it yet. But. Taylor went through a period, though, of a little bit of resentment because there was a new body in town that got more as, as much as attention as she was getting. Yeah. And I remember that bugging her for a while, but these kinds of things helped soften that up. But at three, I don't think they know to be jealous yet yeah they're not quite old enough for that it was more i get to be part of this new thing and Mm -hmm. as long as you make them a part of it they're they appreciate it because they're getting included yeah i agree uh and it was it not only was it not a huge problem and not only did the kids none of the kids ever felt like they weren't liked as much as the other it did provide more weirdly more one-on-one time because instead of just one-on-one time being all the time Mm -hmm. then it became special time yeah that's true so it's like if i'm taking uh, taylor to get a milkshake somewhere that sounds so (laughs) freaking mayberry (laughs) but let's say because we used to like to do that we go get a chocolate shake up the road and me saying all right taylor you ready we're gonna go on our little date i mean she'd just lose her mind she'd be so excited yeah and it was and, just her time. And it was just her. So it became, it went from all the time to, wow, this is, they're making time for me. Yeah. And it, it evens out. Like it just is fine. It's fine. It doesn't mean you're not going to ever have. you are going to have so much fun. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, it is great, Dad. My, Congratulations. Go man to man defense now. <laughs> it's better when you go three, you have, you got to play zone again. It's and true. It's a different kind of zone defense. It's not easy. <laughs> anyway, good luck to you, Tim. And uh, you're going to do great. I'm not worried about you at all. Exactly. Yeah, I have two calls today, and neither of them I have previewed. I have no idea what they say. Behave, everyone. Uh, Well, (laughs) I guess we'll find out if they behaved. I'm just going to play them in the order I receive them. Okay. And here's the first one. Hey, this is Sir Skim. This is Tanner Goodman from Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, quick question for you all. Mm -hmm. How do you guys deal with finances and maybe uh, stress that comes from dealing with finances from your significant other? Now, not necessarily specifics, but I know me and my fiance we kind of get in arguments when it does come to money anyway guys thanks for the show love you guys both and see you in a few weeks in vegas bye sweet tanner coming to vegas yeah we like tanner so uh money sucks and it's the number one (laughs) argument point for most couples for most couples it's true kim and i we've talked about this briefly on the show before but kim does all the accounting uh, it's because Scott doesn't want to bother with it. And I, I totally hate it. understand that. I hate it. It stresses me out so bad. I hate it. I cannot stand accounting and Just stuff. So doing all that. Our partnership uh, includes this one clause where Kim gathers all the tax crap 
She makes sure that the bills are on Quarterly time. Quarterly taxes are paid. Right. If a bank a car a check needs to go to the bank to pay something for whatever, mm-hmm. Kim's on it. Like that's just how we run it. And here's the problem though. I still do this thing that she can't stand. <laughs> where she'll say, Hey, I'm gonna go to Costco or the other day you went. So I get this phone call. I call Kim and she goes, Hey, how's everything going? I said, That's fine. I go, where are you? I thought you were going to be home. She goes, well, we found this uh, this this uh, outdoor Mexican market in Kearns, and I found no, a really... it wasn't outdoor. It was well, just whatever a market. It was. And you said, and I found a really good deal on meat. <laughs> and I thought, ah, that's great. Forget the meat then. <laughs> but in my head, I almost said this thing I sometimes say, and I always regret it. Which I, I know, make, you know, makes me crazy. It makes her crazy, which is, I'll say, don't go crazy, I'll say. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but I know exactly what she he's knows saying, what I which mean, is, which is don't, don't go spend all our money everywhere. <laughs> yeah, don't don't make us broke. Yeah, by buying meat at a Mexican market, right? Yeah, and <laughs> or if it's you know just anything common like I have to go to TJ Maxx and get Nick a shirt. All right, well don't go crazy. Like I do that a lot. I'm just like ugh. It's really right now maybe the most irritating part of finances <laughs> is that I do that. <laughs> But it's because I have this existential anxiety about money that mm-hmm. came early in my life. My dad uh, in the 80s lost everything. In it, I'll give you the quick background on it. He was he ran arcades and uh, imported arcade machines from Japan. And then he ran arcades here in town and also had like a contract with Pizza Hut. So he had a an arcade cabinet uh, sit-down cocktail model in every Pizza Hut from the tip to the bottom of the state. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the family business. And that business had done really well for a while. Uh, those who know their video game history will know that the mid-'80s is a dark, dark... There's a very <laughs> dark moment for the arcade business, right in the center of it there. Um, and then there a resurgence that came from home consoles like the NES and things like that. But anyway, mm-hmm. at the time... Uh, your all family the, was right in the middle of all of it. Yeah, and right up till 84, 85, going great. Uh, well enough to have a nice big house in a nice cool area that we built. Uh, it, way bigger than we needed, but it was cool. And we had uh, a boat and a motorhome. And, and, and like, we were going to Lake Powell three or four times a year and just spending two weeks down there just having a blast. Did really well. It was a good business. And there are arcades, for heaven's sakes. I'd have friends over. The garage is full of these free play <laughs> machines. So we're all playing, you know, Missile Command and freaking Pac-Man and whatever for free. And I was the most popular kid in junior high. It was like the greatest thing ever. And then all of a sudden. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the industry takes a big old poop. And there's lots of reasons why, and you can go look it up if you want to. But there was the video game crash in the in the mm-hmm. mid-80s and lots of facets to it. But my dad had just invested in a brand new warehouse and a ton of stock that he had just ordered a uh, whole bunch of machines cabinets and hardware and, stuff, and cabinets yeah. and stuff just waiting to be assembled. He was going to move into this assembly part of this stuff and become like a big distribution point for companies like Data East and there are some others in there. And the whole thing came crashing down to the point that he lost the business. He lost the the, the company and the warehouse and all of that. Uh, he lost most of his material stuff like the cabinets and the that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. He salvaged about 300 of them and put them in storage, which is a whole other story, because I'm still pissed about what happened to those. <laughs> they ended up in storage. Um, I could have made so much money just selling main cabinets on eBay. Oh, my gosh. It would have been just... Ugh. That's another story. Anyway, so that all pooped out. Uh, foreclosed on the house. The bank took the motorhome, took the boat. We had nothing. And there was even a period of time we were on some assistance there, which I hated. So did he. We hated it. We just could not get our, we couldn't get the ship straight quick enough. It was just so bad. And eventually things got okay and it was, it was, it was okay. But that period of my life. Which you were what, 15? Oh, younger than that. I was probably. I thought you were, well, I guess junior high. So 85, probably, so I'd have been yeah. 14, 15, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had probably just turned 15 around the time this was going on. Which is also a very formative time, right? So you're. When you turn 15, it's a big deal. You're you're yeah. a teenager and, yeah. and you're already feeling all the teen angsty things. You feel like everyone's watching you. Yeah. Plus, this sure. whole thing is going on. And now, 
people are looking at you weird. Neighbors who we thought were our friends were being all uppity nosy about it. Like it just got, yeah. you learned a lot of lessons in this very brief, rough time. And uh, at the end of it all, I think I walked away with a little PTSD about money and money issues. So these days when something, uh, I see anything like, oh, the fridge broke. Clearly we need to get a new generator or whatever the hell we put in one of those. <laughs> whatever it the is. fridge generator. <clears throat> um, I think, oh no, that's the end. It's going to put us Everything's, under. Yeah. And Kim's like, we're fine. Look, here's we, this. We purposely put money away for rainy days. We've taught our kids to do the same thing. Yeah. And so and Tanner, as a result, if you're I'm, listening right now, I'm very tight. Is the other thing he's that came just out of this. really tight. But yeah. there's, as long as you're willing to, I'm willing to say I understand that about Scott. So we don't have as many arguments about money. I just have to go. Don't say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or usually yeah. it's along the lines of dude, and he'll go, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I do it, <laughs> and I don't mean to, and I know. But when as long I do as you it, understand why each one of you has your. Uh, stresses about money or whatever it is that you that you feel like you were arguing about figure it out together what those things those triggers are and then that's going to make your finances a lot easier yeah and don't be because, afraid yeah to... we have to still put money away we still have to pay all of our bills we right. still i mean you guys the patreon stuff that you send is what is the bread and butter around here mm-hmm. and so it we have to work with whatever it is and it always changes and things like that so if you're having two jobs that are every month the same amount then you should be able to figure out a really good budget that you can both live with and work with and have still some mad money and things like that yeah Um, and I know there are people I know there are people out there who have uh, situations where they they have separate checking accounts and they have separate and that's fine like 100 percent yeah whatever works for you totally works for you I couldn't do that like I need it I need one pot I need uh, two committed team members who know yeah. that that's true. Yes. And, and and there and, are months when we go, okay, we got to lock it down a little bit. There's not as much advertising going on right now or things like that for us that have we have to talk about it then. It's like, okay, we need to, you know, tighten the belts just a little bit right now. It's the holidays or whatever's coming up. And um, as long as we're talking about it, everything is going to be fine. We're discussing it. We're not, there's no surprises. There's like, oh yeah, by the way, Mm -hmm. I happen to, you know. Right. Alex in the chat says, does your dad's experience as an entrepreneur and the ups and downs they may cause, uh, did that cause any hesitations for you as an entrepreneur yourself? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I would have done this in 06 or 07 if I'd have, if I'd have been super daring, but I wasn't. I was like chicken. It's worked out. It, well, it all is fine. To, like in the know, end, do I don't regret. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. regret the process. I don't regret the timing. He regrets that we didn't start sooner doing this on our own. Yeah. So if you do have this opportunity to do something on your own, run it. You know, run the numbers. Make sure it's going to work for you. But then do it. Yeah, just it's go super for it. cool to be able to try something a little different. That's not day to day. It's not on someone else's dime. It's not on someone else's. You know, someone else is getting rich off you. Sure. <laughs> But whatever works out for you, the main thing is if you got to have an argument, and mine, again, are usually about me saying don't go crazy and her saying, gosh, dang, yes. I hate when you say that. <laughs> Just know that that's, it's okay to have those conversations, yeah. but don't leave them hanging. Don't let those go unresolved or undiscussed or don't not apologize or something because or it's when that stuff festers, man. Not listen to the other person when they tell you their concerns or their, you know, what they're stressed about. Listen. Yeah. People I went to school with, I hear about their divorces these days almost mm-hmm. always money almost always like a lot of it, that yeah a lot of it comes down to money sometimes it's because the husband's a douche and cheated on his wife or something but that's what i was going to say a lot if you talk to any therapist they would say the two top things are money and sex money Those and sex things baby. That people complain about that's or right fight about yo 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 <laughs> fat stacks of benjamins <laughs> for my hoes right? oh my gosh well, i'm just mixing the two see you're okay all right because you and your fat stacks of Benjamins over there. <laughs> I, I've, I got fat stacks of something going on. Although this cold made me lose about four pounds, so that's good. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I'm, You're working on your diet now. You get sick once in a while. It's uh... <laughs> it's a reset. So good luck. Yeah, good luck to you, man. You can do this. You got this. All right, second <laughs> anonymous phone call, which I don't know the content of. Okay. I'm playing right now. Hey, guys. It's Jules Scott calling for Scott and Kim on Skim. I just listened to the latest episode, and I just love this show. I am single, and I love this show. So let me just tell you guys, thank you for making this show. Okay, here's my question for Scott and Kim. 
what is the thing that you guys have said? I wish that we would do this. Or, you know, someday we should go and we should do this. Or we should try this. I don't know. But there's got to be something that you guys have talked about forever and just haven't done. And I would love to know. Thanks, guys, so much. Love you. Bye. All right, Jules. Awesome. That's awesome. I love hearing from Jules. She's the best. <laughs> I'm uh, hearing from all of our friends today. What? Uh, I don't know. What? What? Travel. Oh well, traveling. Everyone travels. We Isn't, don't. Well, no, because <laughs> no. She's asking, what is the one thing you want to do one day that you haven't done? Much of travel. You've traveled some. I've the, traveled some, not very much. Right. Kim loves traveling. I do love traveling. I hate it. And Scott hates it. <laughs> this is one of our big, one of the big wedge issues of our marriage. I don't think it's a wedge. I think the difference is we talked about it, and I will go travel, and he doesn't, and that's okay too. It's okay too. She runs off with her sister for a week in the Bahamas. Fine. With we me. went to Mexico. It was super fun. Just yeah, the two I don't ladies. care. It but was I, a blast. But I, but this also ties back into my stress about money. I yes. think of travel, yeah. and I think of money. I think of what it costs, and it and it burns my face when I think about it. So when I do decide to travel and he doesn't want to go, I mean I'm gonna. We I, that's not that to dis- say we'll have that discussion. That's and not we'll to talk say I don't want to go. Like I want to go to France with Kim. I yes. want to go to lots of places, and I want to go there with you. I don't want to go with anyone else. Right. When I travel, I want to go with you. When you travel, it's fine if I'm not there. It's true. And 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 that may. But we, we've discussed this. It doesn't bother you that I like to travel and you don't. It's not like. Well, you can't go if I don't go. You're right. never no, going to do that. No, I'm never so. going to do that. I, that isn't the issue. The issue for me is almost always money. It yeah. just always feels like a waste of it's money. It's like how when you're the brand, that's the best way to put it, when you are the, the you brand. are frog pants yeah. and you need to be here for it to be working and in in working financial order, yeah. it's hard to leave. Yeah. And so when we leave, it's usually for a work trip, <laughs> like the Vegas trip coming yeah. up. Yeah, we're going to uh, BlizzCon or, you know, or last BlizzCon, year we went yeah. to a thing in Ohio and, you know. but Super right. fun stuff. And, and, the, and those will come and go and that's true yeah. and all that. But I, it's still so closely associated with money, not just because it costs a bunch, but because I think about how little I enjoy it and how that seems like a waste of money yeah, to me. Yeah, that's not your favorite thing to do. No, because my brain's somewhere else. I'm, I'll, you, you put me on a beach. If I'm there long enough, I guess. Right. I'm, I'm okay. But if you put me on a beach normally, I'm like... We did do uh, that a couple of years. What, three years ago? We went to Cancun. Yeah, we, we did. And we sat on a beach for five days. I made Scott sit there because I knew that he just was going to get burned out because you're working constantly. Yeah. And I, was... and I think everyone's like that. And I think it's different when you have earned... Uh, vacation pay mm-hmm. and you're getting paid to sit on a beach right because mm-hmm. you've worked somewhere for so long well we don't have that we just have to save up for vacations yeah there is no and we so don't have a boss to go and say hey I'm that. taking my two weeks of and vacation. it was fantastic because you sat and drew and read for days on a beach it was pretty in the great shade. it was pretty great <laughs> Cancun, it was but by the by great. the last or the second to last and last day all i'm thinking about is, oh crap this doesn't last forever now we got to go and boy that we sure read, cost we a lot wrote of money. a lot of our our book <laughs> we, it was an all-inclusive it didn't cost a lot I know, of money it everything wasn't was bad. planned ahead paid for ahead yeah all of that well, so it maybe, was fantastic maybe i need to start drinking that's the <laughs> trick <laughs> That's what everyone else does. They go, they 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 hide all of these anxieties about money and everything in uh, in a bottle. Maybe that's what I'm. I don't to think do. that's a good idea. You don't for think you. so? No. Just a handful of no. Benadryl then. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, one day that's that's the one thing is is travel to Europe would be really fun. Plus, I'm just such a. And we just haven't done. That I get yet. so excited about certain things that are non-travel related. Like, yeah, you could say, oh my gosh, next weekend this huge game's coming out. That to me, that's more exciting. And look for you. how cheap it was. It was fifty bucks, <laughs> and I and I've got this be- this long piece of entertainment that will keep me happy. That I then am upstairs watching my shows, binge watching my shows while you play. It. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a lot of our weekends are that, and that's yeah. totally great. Someone in the chat wanted to know your take on this, uh, and, and Jules, you're awesome, and, and we love you too. And thanks yes, for thanks, Jules, thanks for the call. Can't uh, wait to see you again. Yeah, we, we'll see her probably next time. We'll see her probably BlizzCon. BlizzCon unless we go unless we do anything in Minnesota before then. Okay, because we definitely see her if we went there. Anyway, um, what was my point? Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, someone <laughs> in the chat wanted to get your take on uh, my weird belly button thing that fell out. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. No, it, it grosses me out. It is gross. It is gross. But here's here's the big, okay. Well, let's ask this question. Okay. What's for the what's longest time? I mean, let's just admit. Let's just call a spade a spade here. 
For the longest time, Kim just thought I had a fuzzy I'd never get. <laughs> she didn't know. She didn't know it was like part of me. Like it yes, was. A, you told me. Yeah. So that's how I knew. Right, but you'd be like, you got like a fuzz. I'm like, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's attached. Not, it's it's not freaking that. attached to me. It's like okay, part of this the, thing is really gross. Yeah. And I really don't like talking about. it. I know you don't, but. <laughs> Now that it's gone, ignore it. Now that it's gone after in a lifetime. I mean, remember this thing was has been with me since my birthday. Yes. Uh, when my mom pushed me from her womb. Okay. I have had that freaking half tube unit there deal sticking okay. there. So what's your question? My point is, now that it's gone. Yes. Aren't you Aren't you happy for me that it's gone? I'm super happy for you. Because it just it fell out. <laughs> it did not fall in the jambalaya, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Ugh. Seriously. Um, but I, yeah, it uh, was. It, look, it was like I always felt. I always felt I, subconscious I about it. I always felt self. That's <laughs> not subconscious. Self conscious about it. If I went to a swimming pool in my teens, even even when everybody's all hormonal and didn't care, no one was looking. At I your know, but belly I felt button. like they were, and so it was always this point of like, oh, this damn thing, <laughs> and now it's gone. And it's gone. It's out. It's, it's in canned spaghetti somewhere. Oh, okay. Ugh. All right. Moving on. Should we move on? You don't like that. To- no. You don't like that. Topic. I don't because it's gross. Well, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're entirely correct that it is gross. <laughs> All right. We're doing this. Do this. Will you remember to eat the right way? All right. We're going to try here with the uh, foodie segment of the show. Yes. And, uh,. So I, I went upstairs yesterday and got a mouthful of something rad. <laughs> Do you want to tell people what that was? Because that was awesome, and I already had one for what breakfast today. What are you today. talking about? Your oh lava, my gosh, I can't believe you ate it for breakfast. The, I the made little lava unit things. Mini lava cakes. And oh my lava cakes gosh, are pretty dude. easy to make. There's not a lot of ingredients. It's a lot of just chocolate and butter and um Where do you normally flour. get a lava cake? Is that a thing you get at a restaurant? Yeah, usually. Okay. Usually. All right. I can't think of the last time so I had like one a, that was just like not yours. For those that don't know, it's a little tiny chocolate cake. It's small. Flat. It looks like a little, it looks like a short cupcake. But if you heat it up or if you eat it while it's hot, it kind of oozes in the middle. All the chocolate just kind of melts onto your plate. It's fantastic. They so look that's like, why they call they look it like a lava cupcakes cake. that collapsed. Yes, they kind of okay. collapse in the middle. Yeah. Super easy to make. Carter had some friends coming over last night, so I thought I'd make some for them. And Scott is in love with them. Oh, they're so good. Even cold and like out of the old pan this morning. <laughs> they're not in an old pan. I did them actually oh. in cupcakes, uh, cupcake liners because I didn't. I hate cleaning a cupcake pan. First of all, secondly, mm. I wanted to be small so that whenever you got one, you're not eating you know 10,000 calories worth of chocolate in one sitting because I think Scott would do that for breakfast if he could oh I totally would are you kidding <laughs> Absolutely. so making a mini would. worked out really well and I made 12 of them so there oh, were some so over. good um yeah and Carter, I did find the recipe on Pinterest hello let again. me this tells you a lot about our daughter Carter she had um her friends over last night like you said and it's these two girls who she's known for, I guess, since high school. They were since high school, yeah. yeah. These are high school friends. And uh, she's 21, Carter is, almost 22. Mm-hmm. And her friends are the same age. And they're all working and going to school just like her and all that. Never uh, have time to get together very yeah. often. But when they do, they, they seem to have a good time. But here's what they do. They cozy up in a bunch of blankets. Ha- Kim makes couch, lava yeah. cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and they watch uh, a full, and they ordered pizza. Yeah, and they ordered and they watched <laughs> the full three seasons of um, of Troll Hunters on Netflix. Oh my gosh, that's so them. They're such nerds. They're I love so it. So great. I love it. That is what that to me is a Saturday night. Man. Yeah, like, they had a lot of fun. Everybody else is worried about oh how do I look and we should get to the club, roll up on the club and whatever people do. <laughs> nah, dude, <laughs> sit around and watch a rad animated series. It, yeah. binge it and eat chocolate this and laugh. This is what the nerd girls do. Oh. <laughs> I just need f- her to find a boy who likes that. Yeah. Who can, They're out there. And not just likes that, likes that she likes that. Because yeah. he doesn't even have to like it. She, I just want somebody who sees her, smiles and goes, oh man, my nerd girl. Right? <laughs> I got to find that dude. I don't yeah. know where we're going to find that dude or where she's going to. It's not my job. But wherever she finds that dude, yeah. I'm going to be picky Joe Mahickey. <laughs> I don't think you have a lot of say in it, so hopefully she finds a good guy. I know I don't have say. She's looking. But I have... She's adorable. ...some thoughts. Like, I'm going to... He and I will have to have some hard meetings. <laughs> I'm worried about her. Some hard and meetings. I, I don't mean I'm worried about her. I'm worried about... I need... Whoever that is, 
you got to treat her gotta, like the queen. Yeah, dude. Let her do her thing too, because she's she's gonna graduate with her entertainment arts and engineering degree. Yeah, she's a big, she's gonna be a big deal. It's gonna be awesome. And he's got to be and the she's right not dude. Actively like searching, she's having a good time with school and work, and she loves where she works. So <laughs> Chat it's, it's says, or girl. No, she likes dudes. Actually, you know who she <laughs> likes? She likes black, big, tall, black, handsome dudes. Yeah, is what she's into. Which I love because Kim's, Sorry, everybody else. Kim's mom's going to have a canary when, <laughs> oh, when we bring him. Well, she's racist, so <laughs> okay. a little a little racist. Okay. Just a little right. bit. Remember that kid that Taylor dated in high school? I know. So that'll be fun. But she wants it, some Idris Elba type is what she's looking for. <laughs> That's what she's looking for. <laughs> yeah, but she uh, she's, I'm just, I'm so proud of her and so excited for her and so stoked about everything she is that if that guy isn't the nicest dude it's who true. treats her so he, I'll take him oh, out. Freaking, no problem. I got dad rage <laughs> about this. Anyway. Uh well that's it on that front. What now? That's it. That's it. That is kind of the show today. There's that not a lot to talk about. Today. I am excited about this Chris interview. Um if In just it's, a few hours. Scott's getting all nervous already. I'm getting nervous because I because this is You're good friends though. It is I know. But he's this, hilarious. He always calls you sexy when he sees you. Hey I, sexy. I know. You guys want to hear something? Hold on. <laughs> this is pretty funny. This is the start of a voicemail. He's really funny. From let's play it. Let's just play this. You can hear it on the speaker. Okay. Um so I, I we were trying to hook up <laughs> last week to just sort of discuss our plans. And uh this is the message I get from Chris Metzen on my phone. Here you go. What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, baby? Hey, baby. I love him. He's great. He is great. I'm and only. So is Kat. You know why She's I'm nervous? Awesome. Here's why I'm nervous because it's this next phase of our conversation is going to get real personal for him, mm-hmm. and, I, and I just want to do it justice for him. I want him to feel um, super comfortable to, you know, talk from the gut and not not worry about. I, I don't want any of him to worry about any of this stuff. I want him to just be able to say say what he thinks, feels, and wants, and. It'll be gold because that's what comes out of his mouth. But he he's, you know, a sweet, sensitive dude, and I just don't want to I don't want to jack that up for him. That's all. It's going to be great. Don't yeah. you worry. Anyway, so that's uh, later today, which means you probably get a... At least the instance will get an episode today. It might go up on other feeds, too. Hey, You're baby. just working on all your other stuff right now. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's everything. Thanks do you, for all the calls. Do Thanks have, for all the emails. Do we have anything cool for next week, or we just it's just normal? We're Are we here still? We're here. from the hip here. Aren't we here? We're here. Wait, what's going on? Why do I feel like we're not here next week? We'll oh, no, be that's here next week, week. Week after that. And then week after that is Easter. And then the week after then that, the week we're after in Vegas. That, we won't be here. So yeah, we have but, two more weeks. But we'll, we're be, good. we'll be in Vegas we'll together. We'll the difference. Yeah. Maybe we'll do something <laughs> on stage there. I don't know. There you go. Who okay. says? There's no rules. Who says? <laughs> no, there's no rules at all. So uh, <laughs> if you uh, if you want to follow us in the meantime, you can find me at Scott Johnson on Twitter. Kim has a Twitter account, but she never does anything with it. It's true. So you probably just ignore that. Let's be honest. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. It's on Facebook, though. You can follow her there. <laughs> right? You, you do can. Public Facebook stuff. You're not like, you don't lock yourself away from people. No, yeah. I don't put a lot up there, but I put some things. Sometimes. Like the baby's been a big deal, so Kim will put stuff up with the baby. I there. haven't even done that. Oh, really? No. Kim, you're, you're a... I'm a busy person. I think this is... Just... Good. I think it's a good thing, but you're not super tied into the social media no, sphere. You don't need I'm to be, not. do you? You don't if you feel need the to get need. get a hold of me. Call Scott. She doesn't feel the need. <laughs> I don't feel the need. That's nope, true. It's totally fine. Anyway, uh, speaking of calling, you can do that. 801-471-0462. Leave us those voicemails. 801-471-0462. You can find uh, us on the web at frogpants.com slash skim. And if you want to support the show, Kim mentioned it earlier. It's our Patreon, patreon.com slash frogpants. We'd love that as well if yes, you, thank you can. Thank you for all the support. Thanks for all the calls. It's super fun to hear from everyone. That's right. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of the Scott and Kim Show. We'll see you then. Bye, honey. (laughs) Bye. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. All right. Um, thank you very much. Hey, Jeannie. She just showed up. 
Yeah, I do sound. I do. I think I am feeling a little better. Not, not a hundred percent, but I'm 